Hi, I'm Miranda Kathleen, and I'm here with fellow Tealand talent, Shandrika Ravi. Hi, hi everyone. Nice to finally be here. Finally! <laughs> I know. Oh it's my goodness. Finally getting all the dates to get lined up. I would imagine it's difficult because you travel between LA and India quite a bit, right? Yeah. And you literally just, just got back and have been waiting to do this interview series and I'm finally here, so I'm excited. We got her! Finally. <laughs> so why, what's taking you to India right now? Um, so I actually just came back from the pre-release press uh, events and stuff for my new film, Vira Samha Ready. Uh, it's a Telugu film that just released that uh, is like one of the biggest blockbuster openings in India for like the last 12 months or something. Wow, um, congratulations. Thank you. Will you tell us about the story and your character? Yeah, so it uh, basically follows the story of uh, a man who wants to avenge his father's death in a mm. village and um, he heads back to India to basically avenge the, the murderers. And you're his father. Uh, so I actually play um, this... Uh, it's like a village girl type thing and there's a, a giant fair in the the village when he goes back okay. and I'm like providing the entertainment and I'm basically complaining about my love life with uh, my partner um, mm -hmm. so I basically am like the entertainment value in the in the film <laughs> and do you leave the village um, or is so that a spoiler it, it, it's just basically my story in that village mm -hmm. um, it's like a five minute song that I do um, oh. that I'm dancing through uh, with him, um, which is like pretty exciting because he's never like in his 50 year career, 60 year career, he's never done anything like that. Never uh, done a dance. Oh, he's done dances, never. but never in that in that way. Like we, I was like finding myself finding it hard to like match his energy. He's such a huge presence. He's like one of the the greats of like Indian cinema. So that was like a huge blessing to be able to like share space with him. Excellent. I saw a video of you performing live at an event. You're an excellent dancer. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, what is your dance training? How did you come to that? Um, so that was actually the pre-release for this film. I performed in front of uh, Balia, so the, the main actor, and like a few other great like Indian actors. There was a crowd of 50,000 people. Um, and that was actually the song from the film. But um, okay. I started with dancing first uh, at the age of three. I've trained in... Uh, classical Indian styles of Bharatanatyam, Modesi, Kathak, Bollywood, jazz, ballet, tap, hip hop, Spanish, like everything. My parents just made sure that I was very well rounded in the arts because they knew I had a, a like you know a passion for it, and they knew that I wanted to do something with it. So they knew that I had to be able to be well versed in everything. Where I couldn't walk into an audition or a producer's room mm -hmm. and not and be turned down not because of my skin color or anything, but because I wasn't trained enough. Right, right, right. Because I wasn't you know I didn't know something that they wanted me to do, and I think growing up watching Indian films, it's already ingrained in us to have that, you know, artistic side of us that en embraces dancing and music and stuff like that, because Absolutely. that's what majority of our films are like. So I think that was like where that passion came from, because I knew Indian films was obviously something I definitely wanted to dabble in as well as doing like the Hollywood thing. Fantastic. And most of that early training was in Australia, right? Yeah, so in Australia, um, Singapore and India, I did like most of my training. Wow. Um, I would travel with the troupe that I was a part of. We, we did shows like around India, around Singapore, around Malaysia. Like, it's funny because, you know, like some people just fall into this industry. Mm -hmm. I, it's all I've ever known. Like, mm -hmm. I've never known anything other than being an artist, being going to dance classes, going to acting classes, going to a modeling casting. That's all I've ever known. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I couldn't even think of doing anything other than what I do. Sometimes it's helpful to not have a backup plan. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I, I mean, my backup plan, so to speak, was always doing my volunteer work and, you right. know, my humanitarian work. I'm just grateful that I have a growing platform that literally grows every day that I can do that and yeah. use my voice for good. But I would say that was probably my backup plan to do things with children and, you know, the, the things that I'm passionate about. But yeah, like there was never a, this is not going to work. What am I going to do next? Right. It was just, I have to make it work no matter what, you know, I might have my days where I'm crying for an hour or two, like Terry knows, I'll be like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> And then I'll be like, no, this is all, like, the, I know why I'm doing this. I have yeah. a purpose, you know? And that purpose has taken you all around the world. You studied at Murdoch in Australia mm -hmm. and then New York Film Academy. So in Los I Angeles, did, right? um, 
it, even through my, my schooling in Australia, I had like scholarships to extend my dancing studies in Australia, acting studies in Australia. So I did, I went to an academic school, but I was um, in the like personalized performing arts program. Yeah. And then from there, I went to Murdoch University where I did English and creative arts. And then I also did PR at that time because I needed to learn how to market myself and manage myself. Yeah. Um, so I, the English and creative arts was basically like Shakespeare, you know, musical theater, that kind of thing. Um, and then I also did uh, courses at the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts for acting and dancing. And then... Um, I moved to Sydney. I did a bit of training there, mm -hmm. and then I was in Singapore working at Universal Studios uh, as a character actress. Really? Um, I literally played the Queen. Of, it actually it's the crazy. Queen of Hearts. Literally, it, it was supposed to be. They did. Um, they were supposed to do like a Pussycat Dolls type of group, and I was supposed to play Nicole you Scherzinger. You look so much like her. And like I'm going to Singapore. I'm like getting there, and they're like, "Oh, we've canned it, but we've got another role for you." Then it was supposed to be Princess Jasmine, and I was like, mm -hmm. "That's kind of cliche, but okay, whatever." Then the Aladdin guy dropped out. So they were like, the only role we have available is a Queen of Hearts, but like, you love kids. Like, do you want to do it? And I was like, it's fine, I'll do it. And I was covered like head to toe <laughs> in white paint with like the lips. And like, kids would come and like try and take photos of me and then have to stay in character. And I'd be like, don't touch me. And then after I'd be like, I feel so horrible. Because actually, for a person who loves kids, that's a really that's hard role to play. That's the hardest role to do. Like, these kids would run up and like try and hug me and like in Singapore it's so hot and this costume was like 80, 80 kilos I don't know what that is in like pounds neither do I so it was like so <laughs> heavy and tight and like hot and I had this makeup on and these kids are coming to talk to me and like say hi and I'm like I'm sorry I have to be mean to you um, well that like that role seems very different from you you're so warm and I assume it's different from many of the roles that you play. What are the roles that you typically play? You talked about this role in Vera Simha So it's, it's funny because after I did that, when my, my term at Universal finished, I was like, I'm not doing this. Like I didn't study acting for this, like mm -hmm. to come here and do this. So that's actually when I came to LA and did um, New York Film Academy. Um, but I've played a ghost in one of my first uh, Tamil films, Indian films that came out. For half the film, I play a sex craze ghost. For half of it, I'm like a hot chick. And the ghost part of it, I'm covered in like fake blood and like black makeup. My hair is teased. I have like one white like contact in. And in India, in the heat and with the mosquitoes and flies, every day I would sit like this for about 16 hours. I couldn't eat. Like I couldn't do anything because the makeup would like touch oh things. Gosh. Like, um, like I couldn't move because the, the flies would just come and sit on me. And I remember doing interviews then and people would be like, but you've done like Miss World and stuff. Why would you do an ugly role? And I'm like, but I'm an actor. I should be able to show you guys that I don't have to always look like this. I can do different roles. And then right. I've done, I played a villain role. Um, I've played uh, like the, the one I just did in Vera Samaradi, like a dam damsel in mm -hmm. distress. Mm -hmm. um, I just like playing roles where people don't expect me to do something. Like people mm -hmm. expect me to only play a certain type of role and then I'll come up with like something else completely different. Excellent. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what it's like to hold a platform because you have over the years built a platform for yourself. You have about 2 million mm -hmm. followers across social media. What has that been like for you? Um, it, you know, it's like when they say with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. I realized that I, I realized from a young age, I didn't want to be someone that had power and a voice that didn't use it. Mm -hmm. um, so every day that I, great, I you know, grow in followers or whatever, especially from a new film and things like that, I realize it comes with a, with a bigger a responsibility of what I have to do with the things that I'm passionate about. Right. Um, you know, showing that it's very normal and okay to be very westernized and very Indian. It doesn't make you any less of a human being. Um, you know, the things that I fight for, like mental health in, in Southeast Asian countries especially, mm. um, I realize that I, it's a huge privilege to have that power. Um, especially being a woman of color that was born in a, a, a different country and mm -hmm. the things I've, I've gone through to be where I am today, I don't take it for granted. Like, mm -hmm. I know it's a, it's a gift. I, I talk about it all the time that I'm so grateful to have that platform and I want it to just continue to grow so I can do more. Um, Excellent. You know, it's, it's great to post my movie posters and get people to watch my movies, but there's no point having a voice if you're not going to use it. 
I couldn't agree more. And you work with other organizations who are doing this kind of work as well, mm -hmm. right? So I, I work with UNICEF India, and I also work with a couple of other uh, NGOs in India where we predominantly work with children and women. Um, so we, like I work with, a, it's like a family type, um, not family, but it's a organization I've been a part of since I was born. Um, we have a, a clinic called Shiva Shakta where we take uh, we take care of women and children. You know, women's prenatal needs, give birth to the kid if they can't afford anything. We do free eye operations for people that need it. Um, and then my current uh, passion at the moment is in a lot of schools in in southeast uh, south of India, they don't really have uh, toilets for girls in these schools. So which means these girls, when they come of age, they're stopping their education because it's mm. they just don't feel comfortable going to a, you know a co-ed bathroom. I wouldn't feel very welcome if I wouldn't, a building didn't you know, have like a women's if restroom. If it didn't have a women's restroom, so um, I'm looking into building some toilets in these schools because these kids should at least be if they're at least being able to go to these schools through you know poverty and whatever else, they should be at least be able to finish it. You know because. Absolutely. Having a basic education can change your life. And a lot of these younger kids in these rural cities, their education doesn't even start sometimes, you know? Wow. Um, so that's something I'm, I'm working on this year that I'm planning to like have off the ground by the end of this year. That's amazing. Thank My you. hat goes off to you. Thank you. If I were wearing one, I would tip it. <laughs> that's really excellent. And you're paying it forward. And thank you so thank much you. for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me and of course. letting me speak about my story. Of course. I'm Miranda Kathleen. This is Shandrika Ravi. We'll see you next time.